All right, well, we've been going through the hand load process and how to build yourself an adult arrow. And now we're gonna talk about broadhead tuning. And of course, the wizard have on my how to butcher a unicorn shirt. So if y'all ever want to butcher a unicorn, ever shoot one, call me and I'll send you this shirt and you'll know how to butcher a unicorn. <laughs> Here's one of the most systematic ways I've seen to actually do broadhead tuning or just double checking your broadhead flight. So uh, hang on. Here comes more wizard, wizard, wizard. <laughs> there's a few things I got notes today because there's a lot of detail here you need and here's the list a sharpie and if you have black knocks or very dark knocks this is a uh, paint pen sharpie it's actually called a bronze metallic that was what showed up the Apollos that I'm shooting the serious Apollos have black knocks so a black sharpie doesn't work on that very well so you can use silver or whatever you need some duct tape because duct, duct tape fixes everything. Bear shafts cut to length, piece of cardboard to stick the tape on, and uh, you'll eventually need broadheads. What you're gonna do is go through the hand load process in the description of this video is the um, hand load and heavy arrow build binge list. So you wanna go through the hand load process and find what arrow shoots the best for you. So this is my arrow, it's a 250 spine Apollo by Sirius Archery. This is the arrow that I've been, I'm running right now. I've got my hand loads figured out and I want to check broadhead flight. The first thing you gotta do is make sure that you knock tune every one of your arrows. I have a knock tuning video on the channel. You might wanna go do that, but here's a real quick recap. So this knock is black. There's the label, this is the way I do it. I put a dot on the knock and it happens to correspond with where the label is. Some labels are two-sided, so you're gonna have to make sure you get the same way. I just like to orient them the same. And then you bear shaft tune them, okay? So here's a couple of photographs of bear shaft tuning and what you can expect. You need to get your bear shafts flying together with your hand load, et cetera, et cetera. If you haven't done the hand load process, get in the description, look that up. So. As you, you shoot them in and you rotate the knock, okay, and all of a sudden you'll find a natural spot where the shafts want to fly that way. Here's one of my hunting arrows, okay. Here's the dot I put on there to knock tune it. But it took me going to there to get it to knock tune. So there's the label, right? but it's off the label because when I was knock tuning, I was rotating the knock, that's where it naturally wanted to be. So when I started out, I was on the label, okay? But when I, I had to rotate the knock a little bit, then you take your Sharpie and you mark your arrow perfectly for your knock tune. Each individual arrow. This has got your inserts in, you've already done your hand load, and you know what weight flies the best and what arrow flies the best. So you mark the natural knock tune for your arrow. And then when you get them fletched, if you do them yourself, I always shoot the knock tune mark up. On my bow, because of the, where the cables are, it will shoot perfectly vertical, but I tend to tilt it a little bit and just get it like that. You'll just have to figure that out. Sometimes you have to put it in your fletcher and twist it to the side to get them to clear the cables. There's 8 million bows out there. So don't email me and say, I've got a Quantum Super Zipper 46 with the cable cleaners. I don't know what that is. Just make sure it clears the cables and doesn't have any crazy contact because <laughs> that's not going to help. If you have a shop to them, you're going to need to tell them that you want the knock mark up.
Now we're gonna go into the broadhead tuning process. You've done your hand load. You've knock tuned your arrows, you've insert tuned your arrows, you've found out what flies, you've got whatever X up front, and now we're gonna shoot broadheads. You have to shoot your broadheads. You're gonna waste some blades. It's a reason to shoot hand sharpenable broadheads because you can sharpen them, but if you buy Magnus stuff, you're gonna have blades that are going to need to be replaced, and that's that, okay? If you don't shoot your broadheads and just go willy whackering out there, <laughs> they might fly a little sideways, and they, you just have to check them. You're putting a wing on the front. Field points are liars because of aerodynamics. So here's a picture from the Big Mike Tanaka of the Magic Broadhead Tuning L. The vertical part of the L is for checking horizontal wandering. The horizontal piece of the L is for checking vertical wandering. You can see when he shot into here, he's aiming at the edge. It gives you something to aim at if you just aim plumb dead center and it wanders a little bit. So what this allows you to do is you're not shooting at the same hole. You want to shoot up and down the L. Don't shoot at the same arrow because you'll freaking wreck your arrows or cut the things off or take a big chunk out of the carbon and then you'll be sad. After all this work, your arrows will be destroyed. You can shoot up and down the L or back and forth across the horizontal piece to show you what's going on. You don't need to aim at the same spot, just aim at the same orientation. So once again, the top of the L is for, if the arrow is vertically traveling, if it shoots real high or shoots real low, we need to do something. And the vertical piece is for left or right wander. They should track right down. When your broadheads start hitting, just get a field point, throw her in there and make sure that it's shooting the same. So here's a picture of one that got a little wonky, got a little sideways. And if you look at the back of the shaft, you can see that Mike intentionally rotated the knock out of tune and the arrow took off to the right. That's moderately scary given that I didn't do this five years ago, <laughs> not even that long ago. God, how many bad arrows have we all shot that, that broadhead was just wandering a little bit. So you, the air, animal's moving and the arrow's wandering two or three inches or you think, Bro, the, the fixed blade arrows don't fly, you can't make the fixed blade fly. That's because your arrows aren't tuned. So that's a great photograph. Once again, here it is. You can see the back of the shaft. He intentionally turned the knock out of tune and the arrow wandered, you know, two or three inches to the right, two inches to the right. That doesn't help anything unless you can always make it go towards the front of the animal and towards the chest, then you're magic. But uh, <laughs> I think that's utterly unpredictable. Finally, um, he grabbed a stinger and we're not gonna send it in for a warranty. Dude, if you break a stinger, and if you shoot it into a fence post or smash it into metal or something, do something dumb, you shoot an adult arrow through your target and smash it into a brick wall. It's okay to warrant him, but eh, you know, you broke it. <laughs> Not the manufacturer's fault. So what Big Mike did was he's shooting a fully tuned arrow, but he intentionally took a pair of pliers and he bent the stinger and it's not that far off. In fact, he said he feels like the wind got it. But this goes to show you that with a broad head that's intentionally bent and the arrow is perfect and not tuned, that it still isn't that far off compared to the, the earlier picture, here it is, of one where the, the shaft itself is out of tune. That goes to show you the difference or why you should do all this crazy stuff. You should, you know, knock tune, insert tune, spin the time. You guys and gals out there, we spend a ton of time getting reps. We're going to get in our reps of today. We're going to shoot 10,000 freaking arrows. Are they any good? The number you have dialed has been changed. Or should you spend a couple of three days going through a dozen and a half shafts, getting them all perfectly knock tuned? If you have a couple of like those guys and they won't knock tune, you just mark them field point fletch them up and shoot them at a squirrel or something. Listen, it's a manufacturing process. They make these shafts a million miles at a time and we hope they're consistent, but you need to accept that you may have a couple of bad kids. Hey, there's nothing wrong with us bad kids in class, but I have occasionally have one that just won't behave. Maybe it's thin in the middle. I don't know what the manufacturing flaw in it is. It just won't behave or not tune in. I mark it field point. I put a big mark on it or something like that. I fletch it mark the fletchings a different color or something and I know not to hunt with that arrow.
Okay, this is the part of the video where I say I don't really know what the solution is if they don't hit the mark. Uh, here's the magic L where Mike has put on his solutions. So if you have a broadhead that's wandering, you can read this list here, just come back to this part of the video and look at the list and try this. Some of it's rest adjustment. You might have to do some cam lean. You might have to move the broadheads from shaft to shaft. And then the reason why I say I don't know is I went out and tested this. I put up the L, I did my own thing. I shot 300 grain broadheads and I shot 125s. And I had a couple of broadheads that just misbehaved. I, I, I got no rhyme or reason for that because I would change to a different type of broadhead. They're all cut on contacts. They're all about the same kind of head. And I'm not gonna name brands because you'll have the same experience, but in reverse. So that's not fair to the broadhead manufacturers. But I would, I just was out there one day, it was getting kind of frustrating. I would shoot and I'd see it just, just like it had a mind of its own. And I'm like, dude, I've not tuned, insert tuned, they're bare shafted, pull out a bare shaft, shoot it 20 yards. Okay, I'm good. I mean, the bow is fine, the arrows are fine. I don't know what that is. So I've had a couple of subscribers send me different, you know, some folks who have contributed to some of my videos other than Big Mike say, hey, I've got brand X and it's flying, you know, two inches right and low. And then I put brand Y on there and that's how the gun joins right down the pipe. And I'm like, well, shoot the other one, shoot the brand Y. <laughs> Doesn't help if you're already invested in brand X. It, that makes it tough. So my first um, adjustment when I was having arrows wander was to move them head to move them shaft to shaft and try to find matches. Now, mind you, these arrows are already insert tuned. So, and the broadheads are spinning straight. So I don't know, I'm not under spine, you know, shooting 65 pounds. So I'm not 31 and a half inch draw with 82 pounds. I don't have anything that's kind of out of spec. I'm shoot a pretty boring and I'm six feet tall. I'm pretty Mr. Boring as far as the size of me. So it's not like I have arms dragging the ground or anything else. I did take out the Dick Dick bow, 43 pound bow, and shot 15 different broad, you know, broadheads off of it. And it choop, 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 shooting 250 spine arrows just for the kicks of it on 43 pounds at about 27 inches. You know, you got the old good form here. You're kind of crowded up like that. Blink. And it shot everything. So <laughs> I wish I had an answer. The answer is the only way is through. You're just gonna have to tinker with it and find what flies. I, I wish I had a better answer. Go back in the video, look at the magic L. Um, you could play with your rest a little bit and try to split the difference. If they're, they're hitting like this, you know, you can try to bring them together. You're just gonna have to, you know, keep, keep grinding. Bows kind of, they kind of suck. And the more I get into, the more minutia I get into of bow hunting and the actual physics of the bow and the delivery of the arrow uh, off of a compound, the more it just gets crazy. And the more I get into, the more minutia I get into of bow hunting and the actual physics of the bow and the delivery of the arrow uh, off of a compound, the more it just gets crazy. And I'd be a bad reviewer if I just unboxed the head and said, man, this thing's awesome and it's sharp and I won't go hunting for like nine months and I'm not gonna really shoot it, but it looks awesome. So you should buy it. I'm not gonna tell you that. The only thing I can tell you is keep tinkering, stay with it, you know, push on through, but shoot your broadheads. You better make sure you shoot broadheads before you go out in the field because what I've seen, and it's not a lot of them, I just have wanderers. Another option might be just to zero broadheads. I did that. I went to the range, I had one that was wandering, but it was hitting group, they were grouping. Like I wasn't shooting over here and shooting over there and shooting over there. They were just wanted, they had their own little track. Back in the old days when I had no idea what this is 2007, right? And I'm young and spry and really smart. And I shot muzzies. And for me, muzzies always shot 100 grain muzzy on an aluminum arrow. I was shooting 100 grain points. And my muzzies always shot two inches right and two inches high. I mean, it was it just went out without saying. So I took my good sight and I zeroed it for broadheads. I took it off and I had a chunkier sight for just banging around. And that would be for field points. 
I had another friend who had the same problem. His was about two and a half inches off. He was shooting fast for that day. Like 300 feet per second back then was fast. He was shooting super light arrows, 340 or 50 grains. Eastern ACC little skinny guys and 85 grand thunderheads. And he just did the same thing. And he didn't have any trouble. He was shooting stuff at 40 yards of that thing. He was having a normal situation with the light arrows that I've discussed, gotcha. But in that, he was a very meticulous man and his broadheads grouped over here a little bit, his field points grouped over there. Big Mike's gonna pull out his hair and say, well, Fowler, you know, there's about 16 other things you could do. I know, I, well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike. I am the simpleton and I'm trying. So for those of y'all, if they don't hit the line, move them shaft to shaft. And if you find a match that tracks with your field points, shoot the broadhead first, then the field point. Tip number one, that can't be stressed enough because you'll um, shoot the field point and then you, you will inevitably shoot a perfect shot and shoot it right down the pipe and cut off your arrow. That's happened a bunch. Whew. But if you find a two or three or four that actually line up and they actually track, I would keep them whole and mark them and leave them there and resharpen the blades and move on. So I'm sorry I don't have like this magic wizard answer if we were at Mike's house, he would fix everything, but we're not. So keep tinkering, keep plugging. Uh, that's that. Hey, bang in there, but do shoot your broadheads. Make sure that within your effective hunting distance, those things track. It's my recommendation that when you find an arrow with a broadhead that it just shoots like darts, it is perfect. Those stay aside. The best of the best four or five shouldn't be shot. It's just the way I roll. I've got arrows, I've hunted, I, they're my hunting arrows. I insert tuned them, knock tuned them, shot them with broadheads. They shoot that broadhead on that insert, on that shaft, I sharpen back up and I don't shoot it anymore. The only shooting it gets is the shooting to tune it and get it right. And then it goes and goes in the box and I don't, I don't practice with them. I don't 3D with them, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't want any the arrow to be compromised at all today. So build yourself a set of hunting shafts using this process with this L, super double, triple check. You're getting your reps, but these are good reps. This is not just you checking your form to make sure that you're touching the fourth wrinkle on your lip and that the pressure on your nose is 0.87, you know, millibars or whatever you want it to be, okay? That's fantastic, you can do that. You should be doing these reps to get your arrows perfect and perfect broadhead flight. Remember, me and Dr. Ashby are weird. And the Ashby Foundation guys were all a bunch of nuts. I figured out why, I finally figured it out. We care about what happens at impact and thereafter. That's why I just realized that the reason <laughs> we don't fit in and I don't fit in is, I'm worried about what happens at the animal and then I work backwards. Everyone else in the whole industry is working from the bow to the animal and assuming that the arrow is going to work. It is a totally different mindset to say, I want to put the best projectile I can when at impact that has the highest potential to do as much damage as possible, which is a complete pass through. Anything it's going to hit. And then I'm going to figure out from the animal to me what works best. Rather than saying, okay, I'm going to deliver the arrow and pray <laughs> that it cuts a hole in them the size of a hatchet and bounces off or uh, <laughs> other mishaps. So it's just a different mindset to think I'm going to build the best possible arrow. I'm going to spend the time, put in the time, put in the reps to make sure it is at, at impact perfect and driving through the target. You cannot predict what your arrow will hit at all. Zero possibility of that. You can aim in the general area and hope. Hey, this is the Ranch Ferry. Hope this helps you out with the broadhead tuning. Get out the Big Mike Magic L. Works really good, it's pretty simple. You just get a piece of cardboard and some duct tape. That way you can make multiple targets or flip it around and put the tape back on it and shoot it again. Doesn't matter where the holes are. You'll see that your arrows are tracking or they're not. And give it a rip. So that's the Ranch Ferry, super big mic, super broadhead tune. One of the simplest things I've ever seen, as usual.
completely practical. Remember, we worry about what happens when it hits the animal. <laughs> Not so much back here with your purple wrist matching your purple release. Ranch Fairy out.